Or maybe, just maybe, they're starting to realise. Let's begin. Now whilst of course we're in 2022, which no doubt is the year of expense, as nearly everything is rising quicker than I do when I see Catherine Jenkins on the telly. Although the BBC still for some reason seems to think that it's actually 1922, with their rather outdated in my opinion TV licence. But the BBC's boss Tim Davey apparently has finally worked out what their biggest threat is, if this story is anything to go by. I'm guessing something like this is probably happening. Oh no, oh no, this is not good! People are leaving quicker than if they're escaping a fart from a lift! Um, please, please buy a license! Well, I heard that if you click that subscribe button down there, then Tim Davey won't like it that much, so want to give it a push? The article says that the BBC's biggest challenge is staying relevant. Its Director General has admitted. Tim Davey made the comments today at the Confederation of British Industry, the BFI, conference in Birmingham. Mr Davey spoke about the strength of the BBC in the nations and regions of the UK. He also discussed the need for the reform of the 100-year-old corporation, which was founded in 1922. His comments come as the corporation faces ongoing questions over the future of its funding, and the existence of the licence fee is guaranteed, unfortunately, until the 31st of December 2027 by the Royal Charter, which sets out its purpose. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think there's any other company or organisation that we've been forced to pay if you want to watch another company's live entertainment services, like, you know, obviously TV, for example. It's just ridiculous, isn't it? And it's way too outdated. We're not in the 1950s anymore, even actually the 1990s. And there are not only a lot more TV channels out there nowadays, but also the rise of streaming services as well. Which, to be honest, thinking about it, makes this legal threat funding request seem more funnier than watching someone slip on a banana skin. Because with every new streaming service that gets added, they're appearing less and less relevant, aren't they? And thinking about it, apart from sport, that is, who actually, in general, watches TV live nowadays anymore? Although the good news is that the previous culture secretary, Nadine Dorries, did announce that its recent funding review will probably be its last. And her successor, Michelle Dolan, from what I've heard, is against the TV licence as well, which hopefully Hopefully means that by 2028 there won't be no such thing as a TV license fee anymore and hopefully they'll go either the ad or subscription route rather than the council tax sort of style thing which will only be seen as another added tax won't it which is quick me if I'm wrong but not wanting its replacement to be seen as and even the current fee of 13.25 I think it is a month is nearly twice as much as the base packs of Netflix and Amazon Prime. Or actually, if you go for Netflix's new 4 99 plan, then it is over twice as much. Although that does have adverts, and apparently you can't access all the programmes available. Which strikes me as a bit odd if you're subjecting yourself to ads. Former Culture Secretary Nadine Dowies in January announced that the licence fee would be frozen at £159 for two years, and she signalled she wants a new funding model by 2027 when the Royal Charter is up for renewal. She said at the time, I cannot see a world in 2028 where individual households are paying an outdated fee which is established in 1922 to fund an organisation. I do not think that anyone could ever have seen what a digital landscape would be like today, what the view and habits of the the youngest people would be like today, or what the opportunities will be like in 2028. Miss Doyle's successor, Michelle Dolan, has previously said the licence fee should be scrapped, and speaking in September, Mr Davey told the Royal Television Society that the funder model was the least bad option of currently available. It comes after reports that Rishi Sunak is set to shelve the proposed privatisation of Channel 4, which unfortunately I've got a feeling might push things back a bit, but hopefully they will have to go either the advert or subscription route by then. Although, if they refuse to do so, then who knows? I guess they could even end up doing what one of their ex-stars did in this video, where they actually scammed an OAP out of £80,000. Anyway, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one.